2019 was an exciting year for Port Canaveral. Let's take a look back at some of our accomplishments this past year. This year we were thrilled to be named World's Best Cruise Port by Global Traveler Magazine, which is a monthly top-rated business and leisure magazine that's read by everyone in the industry. We were picked because of the amount of service that we give, the new cruise facilities that we've created over the years, and our total dedication to total quality management and customer service. In 2019, Port Canaveral was recertified in the International Green Marine Program. Uh, Green Marine is an environmental certification program. It looks at uh, your existing programs and ways to improve them. We are one of two ports in Florida that are certified in the program. The sand bypass project that was completed in May and June of uh, 2019 moved about 1.4 million cubic yards of sand from north of the inlet, placed it down on the beaches of Cape Canaveral and Cocoa Beach. It cost about $18 million that was mostly paid for by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We are the local sponsor for that project. The Corps is our partner. Um, and the, uh, the emphasis is to restore the beaches back to pre-inlet levels going back to uh, 1951. Earlier this year, we were able to uh, get a state grant to help us purchase a mobile harbor crane here in the port. It's the largest mobile harbor crane of its kind in the United States, and it gives us versatility to handle just about any type of cargo that we need to handle here at the port. North Cargo Berth 8 is constructed in mind as a multi-purpose berth for heavy lift cargoes as well as space components. Once it's completed, it will be able to accommodate vessels up to 850 feet in length. Cruise Terminal 3 is the largest program that Port Canaveral has ever undertaken at approximately 163 million. It's a 180,000 square foot terminal and it's being built for Carnival Cruise Line's largest vessel that they've ever built, the Mardi Gras, which is their new XL class. It's a very exciting project for us. To Admiral Justice and the rest of the elected port commissioners here, thank you for your leadership, but even more so, for the steadfast and unwavering attention that you give to the stability of this port economically, environmentally, and socially for all of the port's stakeholders. The Royal Homecoming at Port Canaveral was another amazing day in 2019. We had Royal Caribbean's two magnificent ships, the Harmony of the Seas and the Mariner of the Seas, arrive on the same day and we had a wonderful day of activities, including our whole community that came out to Jetty Park, waved signs and waved both ships as they left the port. Royal Caribbean's management was extremely thrilled and satisfied with the program that we put on at Port Canaveral, and it was an amazing day. Symphony of the Seas is the largest cruise vessel in the entire world, and its first call to the U.S. was at Port Canaveral. And the reason that Royal Caribbean decided to bring the vessel to Port Canaveral first was that they knew that we had the experience to process passengers in a timely and efficient manner. We've had a number of six cruise ship days up until this point and we have some planned for the future as well. What that normally entails is five home ported vessels and one port of call vessel berth at a cargo dock, which in this case is North Cargo Berth 5. We've never had a cruise vessel perform passenger operations at a cargo berth before, so we essentially had to start with a brand new concept of operation. Well, when we have six cruise ships in the port, that can be up to 35 to 40,000 passengers. So it takes multiple levels of cooperation between us and the local ground transportation community, along with the cruise lines, to get a day like that completed successfully. Welcome to Port Canaveral. I'm your porter. I'm going to take care of your luggage. Make sure it gets safe to your room. Uh, it's a collaborative effort between not only my staff, uh, but the ground transportation staff, harbor masters, uh, security, the sheriff's department. Uh, we all come together, we make a plan, we decide what we're going to do, where we're going to deploy people, how we'll move passengers around, how we get them safely from the ship to their uh, transportation shuttle. Uh, it can be a little bit crazy sometimes, but for the most part, we've been doing this for a while and it seems to work out very well. Six ship days here at the port, my team collaborates to make sure that we have enough staff coverage for the day. Our number one goal is to ensure the passengers debark and embark the cruise ship safe and happy. The port wayfinding and signage project include the replacement of a majority of the signs throughout Port Canaveral and included two uh, exit numbers off 528 and stereo 401 and also included 
designating two different colors for the north and the south side of the port. It helps passengers and guests reach their destination more easily um, in order to find their destinations. And we've received um, multiple comments with positive feedback. The Northside Broadway Improvement Project added an extension of the exit lane from State Road 401. We also added an additional lane going to CT8 and CT10, which allow us to identify each lane going to each terminal. We also added some safety features in front of Cruise Terminal 6 for the safety of passengers. Our recreational community here is very important to us as a Port Authority and we want to accommodate them as best we can. We have a huge uh, public boat uh, a launch uh, with ample parking space. On real busy days, we have to sometimes park them elsewhere. When we do that, we provide the transportation to and from the alternative sites and we did it a couple times this past year and it worked out great. As Hurricane Dorian approached, we worked with all the vessel operators and owners to ensure that their vessels were safely removed because Port Canaveral is not a safe haven. Once Dorian passed, we worked with our partners here in Port Canaveral, Canaveral Fire Rescue, United States Coast Guard, and United States Custom and Border Protection to ensure that we could get our cruise vessels into port and safely unloaded, as well as getting our fuel tankers moving to those needed gas stations along Central Florida. Our cruise business in Port Canaveral continues to flourish. We will again hit record numbers in the following year and as we build a new cruise terminal at Cruise Terminal 3 and refurbish two of our older cruise terminals to accommodate this additional growth. Royal Caribbean uh, visits over 400 ports around the world. We're the largest single cruise line on the planet. Port Canaveral is a key port for Royal Caribbean. It's a turnaround port, it's a home port. It's a home port for our big Oasis class ships. Each one of those ships is a $1.5 billion investment. I think that's testimony to how we view Port Canaveral. It's also in Florida, which is a key market for Royal Caribbean, and it also acts as a big regional market. So we're big fans of Port Canaveral, and uh, it plays an important part of our overall global portfolio. Port Canaveral offers convenient airlift from all over and is easily accessible for those who choose to drive to their Carnival Cruise Line vacation. It's also one of the most popular and fastest growing home ports, so we are delighted to be bringing our exciting, highly anticipated ship to the Space Coast in 2020. We have a mutual commitment to excellence in delivering the best possible cruise experience for families. The port team's commitment to innovation and their strategic vision for the future are qualities we share, and they're especially important as Disney expands its presence at Port Canaveral over the next several years. We are pleased to bring our new class of ships to Port Canaveral and look forward to strengthening our long-standing relationship. Our expectations are all about partnership. We look for a partner who's gonna be there on the good days, on the rainy days, and on the days where you're thrown a curveball. And Port Canaveral are all of those things. They have a fantastic team. They listen to what we need. And when we need something to happen on the day, they're right there beside us. Victory Casino Cruises has been operating now a little over eight years, uh, and we're getting ready to celebrate our three millionth passenger and Port Canaveral has provided us with the premier location throughout the entire United States to do this type of business. American Cruise Aid Logistics is in its 15th year of operations presently. Uh, we started as a very small company, basically uh, providing last mile delivery services to Disney Cruise Line. Since then we have grown to a uh, client base of all the major cruise lines in Port Canaveral and uh, many other ports in the United States. Last year, 2018, we broke a new record of multi-day passengers of almost 4.6 million. We expect this year those numbers to increase even more with the addition of the brand new Carnival Mardi Gras and the other additional ships that are coming on to Port Canaveral. Our future looks bright and will be continuing to grow for many years to come. Our cargo business remains strong. This is largely driven by the growth in Central Florida, large construction projects, housing developments, et cetera, uh, very strong on our, our bulk aggregate materials and our lumber supply coming through the port. With the addition of John Murray, the port director of the Port Authority, uh, he's been very pro-cargo and uh, going attending with ASI personnel, myself and his cargo personnel, we've been able to attend conferences and, and get some more business to Canaveral uh, with, based on new infrastructure that the port's done, that we've done, and it's been a good team for, for growth of cargo in Canaveral in conjunction with the Port Authority. Well, here at Seabrook Canaveral, we, we've done a significant investment uh, in partnering with the port as well. Back over 10 years ago, we built this facility to be able to enable 
uh, and facilitate our suppliers' products going to the Central Florida market, which is a growing market. In January, we took possession of our new mobile harbor crane, which is considered the largest in the United States. This mobile harbor crane gives us the flexibility to handle cargoes such as bulk, break bulk project cargoes, which includes rocket boosters, as well as space components. Our mobile harbor crane uh, is German built. She's mainly hydraulic. Um, she's, she weighs 1.4 million pounds. She, we're able to move her from pier to pier on our north side, and her capabilities in cargo, she's able to handle containers 18, 18 wide on a, on a vessel. We're able to handle uh, space equipment. We're able to handle generators, boats and yachts, lumber, break bulk items, and we, we find her uh, with very good use here in our port. With larger vessels calling on Port Canaveral, North Cargo Piers 3 and 4 have become functionally obsolete due to their outdated pier designs. By reconstructing these piers, this will allow us to provide support to our current and future cargo partners. The North Cargo Berth 8 um, is our last unimproved area within the port and over the last year and in the future we are working towards improving that. Over this last year we built a 900 foot bulkhead wall um, and we are currently undergoing the upland paving portion which is about four acres of heavy duty pavement and in addition to a 120 foot pier extension which will maximize the use of that area for port cargo tenants. 2020 promises to be an exciting year for Port Canaveral. Once again we will position ourselves with new berths, new terminals, and more growth as we become the first LNG port for cruise ships in North America. We are setting ourselves a stepping stone that will lead into a brighter and brighter future over the next several years. We're thrilled to be named the first North American cruise port to have LNG service at Port Canaveral. We're going to have at least three LNG ships here. We hope to expand that and add additional LNG ships and become the LNG port of the future. So in 2020, the first uh, cruise ships in the United States will be fueled on LNG here at Port Canaveral. With that, we have started learning everything we need to know about LNG and training all of our personnel on LNG, including the local fire departments in the area. Um, with that also, we're purchasing additional equipment to augment what we already have in place to make sure that we are prepared for anything. We started this project three years ago. This requires a lot of coordination with the agencies that regulate that activity, and the, we've been working closely with them throughout that entire period. One of the exciting elements of the port's preparation is the expansion of the Port Canaveral Firefighting Academy to include LNG and firefighting capability of LNG. We've currently expanded the Fire Training Academy to include LNG training. This particular type of training is being done with real LNG in a realistic environment. We'll be training cruise ship personnel along with mariners that will be using this fuel and fueling these vessels. And we are training these people from all over the country. Uh, this will be, this is great for us as well as them because our firefighters are getting to see this done on a weekly basis and use this particular fuel, which is pretty unheard of and it's leading the way. One of the companies that's going to be providing LNG is QLNG, and they're building a articulated tug and barge in Pascagoula, Mississippi, called the Q4000. That'll bring in 4,000 cubic meters of LNG for the Carnival Mardi Gras. So we were just awarded a grant from the state of Florida as well as an additional grant from the um, FEMA to purchase a fire boat and the Canaveral Port Authority is also uh, matching that grant. We will be purchasing approximately a $4.8 million fire boat. This particular boat is equipped with um, dry chemical agent and that agent is specific to LNG. It's a great asset that will serve the port here long into the future. One of the items that I'm most proud of are, are the port partnerships um, with many organizations throughout the, the county and the region, such as the Sea Turtle Preservation Society, uh, Keep of Art Beautiful, Marine Resources Council, the Indian River Lagoon National Estuary Program, and others that we work with on not only special events, but also hosting uh, volunteer events uh, for folks to get out on coastal cleanups 
and, uh, and get out and give back to the community. And it's something that uh, I believe in personally and the port has taken uh, a strong lead in um, out here uh, in, in our port community. What we're excited about with the Recreation Department is the development of a new Jetty Park campground store. What that allow us to do is deliver further uh, wonderful guest service for the campers that come visit us during a very busy time. North Cargo Berth 8 has been designed to handle uh, heavy lift cargo with up to 2,000 pounds per square foot capacity. Uh, the southern wall was designed to be removable in order to accommodate the pier extension and then that pier extension will also accommodate an even further 180 foot pier extension down the road. North Cargo Berth 3 and 4 represent over a $70 million project. We are focusing currently on North Cargo Berth 3 at about $37 million. We're currently and actively pursuing federal grant, state grant funding, and other funding mechanisms for those projects. And we're very optimistic that we'll be able to begin construction on North Cargo Berth 3 by the end of the year 2020. In 2020, cybersecurity is going to be one of our most important uh, technology initiatives that we have. Uh, but it's not just technology, it's really training our employees is going to be one of the main focuses. So uh, our employees are the greatest target that we have and equipping them with the right tools to uh, help us uh, defend against attacks will be number one. In addition, we're looking at uh, utilizing facial recognition uh, technologies to clear passengers through the cruise terminals. Uh, we've already started rolling those technologies out at Cruise Terminal 1 and have been extremely successful. Uh, customers are clearing in record times and it's improving customer experience. Cruise Terminal 3 is approximately 188,000 square feet. It has 1,700 seats and it's going to have a second floor entranceway which uh, has a covered walkway that's going to be going from the parking garage directly into the cruise terminal. We started to plan this project several years ago. In fact, back in 2016 was the date of our first meetings where we began to contemplate Terminal 3. We knew that there would be many different components, many different teams, many different entities involved in CT3, and all along the way we've seen some fantastic partners have brought their best game to the table. We really believe it's going to be a, a fantastic success for Port Canaveral and for Carnival Cruise Line as well. Cruise Terminal 3 parking garage is approximately 1,800 parking spaces. It has an elevated walkway that's going to be going from the third floor of the parking garage to the second floor entranceway to the terminal. The project's being built by a couple of very important local partners. Ivy's Construction is building a terminal for us. They've teamed with Finfrock to do the design build parking garage. And on the marine side, we have Rush Marine, and they're building that $38.6 million uh, marine project for us. It's a very exciting project. It, it represents a substantial amount of temporary construction jobs, and we're very excited to be a part of that. Cruise Terminal 3 Marine Berth is approximately 1,300 feet long. It was designed by Jacobs Engineering with partners with Atkins. Uh, Rush Marine is the contractor. We're very excited about the Cruise Terminal 8 and 10 project for Disney Cruise Line. Disney Cruise Line has been a fantastic partner for the port for many years. And we're excited that they're re-cementing that partnership for years in the future as well. We'll be spending about $50 million on the Cruise Terminal 8 and 10 project through the terminals, a new passenger boarding bridge, and the Marine Works on that project. We'll be adding a new baggage processing facility. We'll be expanding the entrance area where people get picked up and dropped off. We'll be renovating parts of the interior of that terminal. We will be maintaining that same existing uh, Disney vernacular that the terminal currently has, but we'll pr be providing substantially more seating capacity for the guest experience. In 2020, the port will have a lot of operational activities, but the safety of the community, the public, and our guests are our highest priority. We've got a lot of great plans for 2020. We're looking forward to some exciting initiatives and challenges, and we've got wonderful men and women who are working for Canaveral Port Authority and are dedicated to use their expertise, experience, and talents to provide the very best internal and external service for our guests. While 2019 was an exciting year for the port, we're carrying that momentum forward into 2020 with many more new and exciting projects yet to come.